So hey everybody, I am going to make some fun pumpkins and you know, buying craft pumpkins, you know, they're kind of plain and you would have to assemble them or do something to them and they tend to be quite large. I'm looking for nice small ones um, and I don't want to use real ones all the time. So I thought I would make my own pumpkin and I want to do it out of clay because then I can mold it and do some fun techniques with it. But to use a ball of clay um, to make a pumpkin about this size, it's a lot of clay. So instead we're going to start with a form and then add to it. So what I've done is I've taken a couple of paper bags, crumple it up, stick one inside the other, and form it into a ball shape. And so this one is the dual paper bag, and you can see it in there. This is just a single larger paper bag. And then for both, you're just gonna take a little bit of aluminum foil, and wrap your bag up. The reason why I'm not using 100% aluminum foil is because there's really no need to. That's a lot of foil to use. And I have a ton of paper bags. Um, the reason why I'm putting the foil on there versus leaving a paper bag is you notice the paper bag kind of opened up again versus stayed small. And now I can kind of shape this into whatever shape I feel like I want to for my pumpkin. So I'm making them somewhat pumpkin-y shaped. This one's a little bit more round. This one's a little more squat looking. This guy is a little bit different. And as we put the clay on there, we'll be able to mold them even more. Now, I do not have mass quantities of orange clay, but I do have white and I have paint. So we're going to blend. So we're using Macon's clay. This is a no-bake polymer clay, so it is an air dry clay. So one thing you do want to make sure when you're using um, clay is that you have a water bottle nearby because it will start to air dry and it will harden on you. So to keep it from getting too hard too fast, you just kind of spray it and wrap it up in a little bit of paper towel. So when you open this up, you're going to find that it has a couple of different packages. Once you've opened up this bag, it will dry out faster, but we're going to just work with one clay to begin with and blend using our colors. I have some other clay over here as well, and this is going to be for the stem. We're just going to kind of tie this off, spray in here and kind of seal it back up so that we can get too dry. Now we're going to take a batch of our clay. I want to do all pumpkins, each one of these, a little bit of a different color. So I am going to work one at a time and make sure I texture it and everything else before I move on to the next pumpkin. So I'm just going to add some paint to this and it is going to get you a little messy because you want to really make sure that it blends well. Okay, once your clay gets kind of encompassed in with the, the paint, it's not gonna come off in your hands. So I did wash my hands in the mat. And now we're gonna roll it out. And we are gonna add more color to this once it is dried. This is just giving us a base coat to start with. So instead of starting with completely white and having to do a lot of painting, I can just add some depth of color to our pumpkin now. And you want to give yourself a decent amount of clay to actually play with. So we're going to go with this guy and I'm going to lift it up and treat it like it's dough basically. Top side, start filling it in. Some more clay too. So I'm gonna grab some more. This is why I grabbed a really big white one. <laughs> I need a ton more, but I do need more.
So I'm not too worried about that the pumpkin color or the orange colors of clay are a little different. What I'm concerned about is making sure that everything is coated. And now we're going to try and smooth this out. Okay, your pumpkin does not need to be 100% smooth because we're going to add more texture. And the more texture that's in there, the better. Because pumpkins in nature are very bumpy lumpy. Alright, so what I have now is I just have some plastic wrap and I'm going to wrap my pumpkin. Mostly because I don't want my tool to kind of stick onto the clay. And I want to create all the grooves for the, um, the pumpkin marks. Because pumpkins have little grooves. So now I can go in here and kind of mark and I'm not pulling on the clay, I'm just making my pumpkin groups. Down to the bottom. And I'm just using a tool with a ballpoint on the end. And I want some nice big grooves, because this is not a tiny pumpkin. So you can use a little bit of a bigger tool. To make life easy, just go the other direction now. Do, you can start doing it like a pie. And there becomes the beginning of our little pumpkin. So now we're going to go in and add a little bit more texture. So this is what happens when you try and do it without the plastic wrap. See, it's kind of pulling on here. It just doesn't work so well. So we're going to switch out our tips. Actually, I'm just going to keep that tip on there. I'm going to more of a fine point tip. And I love this tool because it ends up having two different ends. Kind of unscrew that a little bit there. I'm still keeping with my plastic wrap. I'm just going to go in and add some fine detail. It doesn't have to be exaggerated. Just add some more markings. Just some lines, giving your pumpkin some more texture. And don't worry about being perfect. Pumpkins are not perfect either. Don't forget the sides and towards the bottom too. there we go, beginning of a pumpkin. We are gonna add a stem to this, but I'm gonna roll that out separately and glue that on separately after I finish spraying and getting just the colors that I really, really want. There are a couple spots where some of the, the foil kind of came through again, but I'm not too concerned because I think I can cover that up with some of the paint and spray that we're gonna add to. But there's our pumpkin. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other two. They might be a slightly different color than what this one is, but the same technique. All right, so here are my three pumpkins that I have created. Um, here's the first one that I did and it is starting to kind of harden up. I really wouldn't be able to go in there and mold the clay much more. I would have a hard time. I did make a nice divot so we can put the stem in it eventually. And I'm not too worried about that it may still have some little, you know, spots that are kind of open because we are going to go through and kind of paint this and mist this up a little bit. This is the smallest of the three pumpkins here. I then went in fourth and made this one. It's a little bit of a different color. For this pumpkin color, I did mostly um, the orange twist. Um, it's a little bit of the canyon orange, so I did a little bit of a blend on this one, so it's a little bit lighter. And then this one was purely just orange twist. We're going to let these completely harden before we add any of the um, painting and misting that we're going to do to these. But And I don't mind that it has some little fun divots and kind of some bumpy lumpies because that's what's going to happen with a regular pumpkin. Making sure to add a space to put a stem in eventually. And then here is the lightest one of them all. And this one's more roundish in shape. I'm not too worried about the bottom not having it because that's where it's going to rest. 
So these ones, this one's more round. It's the tallest of the three. Um, and that's what they look really nice together. This little trio of pumpkins. And you can definitely see a lot of the grooves and marks on them. And again, I'm not too worried that it's two different colors. Perfectly fine for me. There it is. Very cool. All right, so while these guys are drying, let's make some stems. So in my bag over here, I've got a couple of different colors of clay and we are going to roll this out into some long tubes. Okay, so if you've ever seen a stem that goes on top of a pumpkin, it looks like it's got ridges within itself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut small sections from this and we're gonna add it to, and kind of roll them together. We will end up painting the stem as well. So this is not gonna be what the colors are gonna end up doing, but I really want some green, some, and then we're gonna kind of add some brown to it as well. I'm not even gonna bother putting this on. I'm just gonna cut some sections. And this you could attach to one of these. I'm just being lazy. So now I'm gonna take some pieces here, start with a few of the peachy colors and then add, you definitely do two, two, two. So there's gonna be two greens for each stem. And we do four peaches. Kind of want the green to be on the outside and see how we're getting kind of layers here and I want to keep that bridge roll it just a little bit not too much I do want to keep some of a layer flatten it out then we're definitely going to add some uh, browned this to kind of add some brown color. This is not the final stage. And then we're going to layer this on to here. Like that. And we're going to have to blend the two colors together at some point. So I'm not going to be too worried about how it's attached, but we do want to have a nice firm attachment of the stem. So we're going to use glue to hold that in, but we're going to color and paint that first and do the same thing for the other ones. So at this point, just let them all kind of dry. I know they look kind of funny right now, but we're gonna add color to this and make them look a little different and they just fit right on there as cute little stems. I made them all just a tiny bit different and they all will look like a true pumpkin-y color at the very end. I'm just starting with a base and we're gonna add some browns. So lots of drying now. All right, so here are our pumpkins. They are, the bottom is not 100% dry, so I'm not gonna kind of let them. It might take a couple more days because there's quite a bit here, but they are, Definitely starting to get harder. So at this point, we're gonna start coloring them. I think I'm gonna start working on the stems first. So with the stems, I'm gonna definitely add kind of a darker color to these. I've got a couple of different paints um, that we're gonna play with, and then I might add some lighter colors. So I'm going with browns. Uh, I've got various Tattered Angels paints. This one is Satchel, this is Glimmer Glam and Rustic, and this is Glimmer Glaze and Saffron. So we're going to start with the saffron. This has its own applicator, which is fantastic. And this also acts as kind of a, a glaze in a way. It definitely kind of coats it. And I, I want to get rid of that color of the green. So we're going to add some more color on top of this. Now, the other thing is I don't want my stems to look like they've come to a point. I want to look like they've been snipped from the, the plants. So I am going to go through, and now that these are kind of warmed up from me heating them, 
I'm going to snip them. This means that these have not fully hardened. So now they look like they've more just gotten kind of cut from the plant. these stops aside and kind of cool off for a bit while we work on our pumpkins. So with our pumpkins, we've got a variety of different types of mists that we're going to play with. We've got some yellows, we've got some oranges, we've got some glimmer glazes, I think I'm going to wait for the end, some simply shears, we've got some dark oranges, light oranges, just a little variety here and some yellows to kind of help add some color and then we might even pull in some of the suede color. We're going to do a little bit of both painting with them and also spraying them. Let's start with our darkest one first. So for the darkest one, I am going to use the darkest colors of paints. And then for the lighter ones, I'll go with lighter colors to give us some nice color changing feel to it. So I've let the pumpkins kind of sit here and dry for just a tiny bit. And if you did notice, I went with three different colors. I just played with the idea that if I sprayed on the top, all of the mist kind of dripped down on the side and really kind of got into some of those grooves and played with that feeling. So they're, they definitely pulled on the bottom, but that's fine. You're not gonna really see the bottom. They're not 100% dry. They're gonna take some more time, but they are very close. And I just love the texture, all the little groove marks that I made, all the little wrinkles from the plastic wrap as we were applying all the clay. It really is just emphasized in this. And I love the darkness and how it kind of pulled and collected and the shimmer that's on them. They're just really cool. I love it. So I also went through and I just, I kept playing with the colors of the glimmer glaze. I tried the suede, but none of them really looked that great until I applied the glimmer glam. And so I applied the glimmer glam to the top of the stems. And when you see them on top here, I think I like this guy here. Um, they really just look like little stems that belong on tops of pumpkins. So at this point, they're pretty much dry and all I need to do is just glue them on. I mean, they look fantastic. So I'm going to use some mixed media glue. It's just really kind of an all-purpose glue. I could also use the uh, the Beacon 3-in-1, but this is the Beacon Mixed Media. And apply a little bit of glue to the top of the pumpkin here. And I'm just gonna take these all off and apply to each pumpkin. And you got a little bit of time once it, you apply the glue before it fully sets in. So you can kind of play with the orientation of how you wanna have your stem on here. Just kind of sitting on top. I love the idea that the stem is just kind of so shimmery and shiny and pretty. It's very gorgeous. So they just kind of fit on here. Wipe off any excess. The last thing I'm going to do, just to make sure that these guys are nice and secure, I push down, is I am going to spray all of these with a good coat of a sealant. Um, 
it's also going to give them kind of a nice luster and kind of a shine and it'll make sure that they kind of stay sealed and protected over time. So the spray sealant I like to use is an acrylic sealer finish. This is a matte. If I want it super shiny, I also have a shiny one, but I like the matte finish and I've been using this one for a long time. I only do this outside though. I do not spray inside because it does get kind of yuck. Spray them up. I actually have a really old yucky craft mat. Let me show you. This was my original painting mat I used from a long time ago that before I got this mat and I use this thing for just about anything. So I really truly don't care. I like the fact it's a little stiffer. This used to be one of those self healing mats but I've since long used it for other stuff since then. And I'm gonna take these out and go spray them out. All right, so here they are all done, all nice and shiny and sealed. Um, they've gone about four hours since I coated them with the sealant and they are dry. They have a nice little sheen on them, as you can see. Really, really pretty, pretty gorgeous. I love that. And you can really see all the nooks and crannies and all the little kind of bumps and nooks. And it's just, it's really fun. See all the little, little pieces of it. Just like a little pumpkin would be. So thanks for stopping by. There's some close-up pics coming up here in a second. And please subscribe. Bye-bye.